Hi again, so this is question 7, uh, basically a different simplifier. So assuming an ideal op amp, derive an expression for V out and compute its value for the given component values. So first we need to find the expression for V out here, right? And then we have to substitute some values of resistance, R1, 2, 3, 4, um, to calculate the the output voltage. Okay, and we have to repeat that experiment to find V out for the same setup, but with like voltage sources that are cosine with different frequencies. Okay, so let's start with part one. So for part one, first uh, we can start uh, using a voltage divider to find the voltage V plus here, right? So we can find we can apply a voltage divider because V plus here is the same as the voltage across this R4. Why is that? Because remember there's no current flowing inside here, right? One of the conditions for a DO amp op is that I plus equals to I minus equals to zero amperes, right? And the second assumption is that V plus is equals to V minus. So once we find out this voltage here at the no inverting input, we can apply KCL here. Okay, so one step at a time. So for the first step, find so let me say here one find v plus okay so in our case v plus is equals to v2 times r4 divided by r3 plus r4 that's the first equation right now that we know v plus we can apply kcl here so for the second step apply KCL at node V minus so applying KCL at the node V minus gets gives us V minus minus V1 divided by R1 right plus V minus minus V out on the feedback loop divided by R2 that equals to zero. So if we manipulate this second equation here we get that V minus times 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 minus V1 divided by R1 minus V0 divided by R2 that's equals to zero. So now we can basically isolate V out from this equation here. So this gives us V out equals to V minus and then we have this R2 here that basically multiplies everything. So here it becomes just one, right? So it's one plus R2 over R1 Okay, which is this equation by itself it's a uh, no inverting amplifier but because this R1 it's not grounded we have V1 then we still have to include this ratio here between R2 and R1 times V1 which for a no inverting um, a common no inverting amplifier would be zero right so this is the equation for V out now we know the equation for V minus because V minus is equals to V plus so our final equation for V out is equals to V2 R4 divided by R3 plus R4 times 1 plus R2 over R4 minus R2 over R1 times V1. Okay, so that's the the equation for the first part. Now, if we just plug in the values that were given for R1, R2, R3, and R4, and V1 and V2, we get that V out is equals to so V2 is three millivolts times 24 k ohms for R4 divided by so R3 is six, right? So it's 6k ohm plus 24k ohms times 1 plus R2 which is 8k ohm R4 so this is not 
This is not R4, this is R1. R1, which is 2k ohm, minus R2, which is 8k ohm, divided by 2k ohm, times V1, which is 2 millivolts. So if we solve this, we get V out equals to 4 millivolts. So that's what we have for the first part, okay? Now if we go for the second part, we just have to repeat that for the new uh, input voltages, okay? One thing is that we can apply a superposition like we analyze the contributions of each uh, of both inputs but in particular frequencies, okay? So if you look at the equation for each of the inputs, 30 here and 30 here means 2 pi f, so the frequency is 30 hertz. For the second component of the inputs we have 100 here and 100 there. So that's the, the component of the input that it's oscillating at six at 100 hertz, okay? So we can first treat as VI as 4 volts for V1 uh, and 4 volts for V2 and then we can use the same equation that we derived on the first part. We find that and then we apply again the same analysis for the, for the voltages at 100 hertz. So V1 equals to minus 0.2 volts and V2 equals to 0.2 volts, okay? So let me go down here. So at 30 hertz, we have V1 equals to 4 volts and V2 equals to 4 volts, okay? So if we just change the values of the voltages here and here by 4 and 4, you will see that V out at 30 Hertz is equals to zero volts. They are basically cancel each other, okay? Now, at 100 Hertz, we have that V1 is equals to minus 0 0.2 volts, right? And V2 is equals to 0 0.2 volts. So if we substitute now here and there by 0 0.2 volts, this gives us an output voltage at 100 hertz that's equals to minus 1.6 volts, okay? So at the end, our V out is equals to zero, so there's no, at the output, there's no component at 30 hertz because it's just zero times the sine of 2 pi 30 T, right? So there's, there's no component at 30 hertz. But for 100 hertz, we have minus 1.6 times sine of 2 pi times 100 T volts. And that's the final answer for this second part.